All right, guys, in the continuation of what we were talking about last week, we were doing defrost circuits of the refrigerator. We talked about the thermostat and the defrost timer. And I said I was going to tell you guys about this plug that's inside of the refrigerator. A lot of the Whirlpool top mount refrigerators that are not electronic controlled, which means when we say top mount, we're talking about where the freezer is inside the, the refrigerator. Sometimes the freezer is at the top and the refrigerator is the bottom. If the freezer is at the bottom and the fridge is at the top, you either call it like a French door refrigerator or sometimes they call it a bottom mount refrigerator. That's where the freezer is. And then you've got what they call the side by side, where the freezer is on the left and the refrigerator is on the right. This is very typical to some older style Whirlpool refrigerators and, and even current Whirlpool refrigerators made out today. We've already talked a little bit about the defrost timer, but I want to talk about the defrost circuit how the defrost circuit works, what it's supposed to do, and then some of the things you can do to test the defrost circuit. Like if you went to a refrigerator and you had a problem with it not defrosting, what are you supposed to do? First thing that will happen is that when we go on the defrost, this timer is going to switch over to the right hand side here. Close it for a second. All right, so the defrost timer can be switched over here to the right hand side for the defrost cycle. Power is going to come in go through the operating thermostat, through the bimetal, through the heater, and back out. How much time do we say the defrost cycle is supposed to be? 22 minutes. About 22 minutes. Okay, this defrost bimetal is the same thing as a thermostat, like in a dryer, we, we call it an operating or safety thermostat. A bimetal and thermostat are the same thing, they're just called something different. This bimetal here, though, closes when it gets cold, where a dryer thermostat opens when it gets hot and closes when it gets cold, but at different temperatures. Okay, so a dryer will cycle at 120 degrees, 140, 150 degrees. This thermostat will close at about 18 degrees average. Okay. Some can close a little colder, some can close a little warmer. They will open up at about 35 to 48 degrees. So what happens is this thermostat is attached to the evaporator tubing inside the freezer. What temperature do we say that evaporator gets at when it's running? Huh? Negative 15. Minus 15 degrees. The evaporator. That's about the approximate temperature that the evaporator is going to be inside the freezer. The bimetal, does anybody know what tube in the evaporator the bimetal is usually attached to? The suction line. Very good, David. The evaporator's got two lines. One is the capillary tube which comes in, feeds the evaporator. The suction line is the one that comes out. The bimetal is always attached to the suction line. It's sensing the temperature of that, that tubing, okay? So when it gets about 18 degrees, this thermostat will close. So the timer goes into defrost, energizes this heater through that thermostat, and the cycle of the timer is going to sit there for 22 minutes before it switches back over to cooling. But this bimetal here is going to open at about 48 degrees. Now it's going to sense the temperature of the air in the back there by the evaporator. When it gets about to 40, 50 degrees, somewhere back there, it's going to open up and it's going to stop this heater from running. Okay? The timer is still going to sit here for 22 minutes. And when the timer feels like it, 22 minutes are up, it's going to switch back over and energize my cooling components in here. So what do you do if you go into someone's house and you see this evaporator all frozen up? What do you do? Check the bimetal. Check the bimetal, check the timer, check the heater. Okay. Well, guess what? You go to that customer's house, and let me see if I got a picture here. This up a little bit. Oh, 
going forward. And I don't know where my pictures are. Hold on one second. See if it finds it for me. Nope. This does right. Okay, let's let's just go on the internet and I'll get you that picture. Showing a good picture, but let's take a look at this one right here. There's an evaporator there, completely frosted up. If you go to someone's house, you might see it a little bit of frost, but it's just a very light coating. If it gets any more than about an eighth of an inch thick, or as thick as you see here, the refrigerator's not defrosted. And usually, by the time the customer notices, the, the freezer temperature gets so warm, the food's spoiled. But because the tubing itself is so cold, even though the food is melting, and <coughs> excuse me, it's, even though the food is melting and going bad in the freezer, this ice is not melting because the tubing underneath all that ice is 15 degrees below zero. So this is not going to melt on you. So when a customer calls you out, you got a panel over this, and that ice may even be on that exterior panel. You might not even be able to get to that evaporator. Go ahead. What's the question? Well, well, why do you feel my evaporator fan is not working? I'm not going to have the same result? Not necessarily because it's still defrost, right? The timer will still go into defrost. So you'll have a cooling issue. You might have a slight frost pattern on the evaporator, but you're not going to have it that thick because it, the timer is still going to go into defrost and melt that ice and start over again. If the, if the eight hours not happening yet. It, it, if you had a refrigerator that's not defrosting, Let's say the heater was bad, timer's bad, whatever. You can go from seven to 10 days without defrosting before you really start losing your cooling. So if, if a customer called you out, they're gonna call you out and say, hey, my box is not cooling. You're not gonna see this much ice on the evaporator. It's gonna defrost. It takes two or three days to build up that much ice. Okay, okay that much there. A defrost problem is even worse. Okay, so if they're calling you out because of food spoiling, it's more likely a defrost problem, not a bad fan motor. But let's go here. Going to what you were saying, you'd go and you check the bimetal. Bimetal could be bad. Well, first of all, it's hidden behind the panel. Panel's got ice on the front of it, and there's ice in the back of it. You can't even get the panel off because it's frozen. You're like, okay, well, the heater could be bad. Well, that heater's buried in all that ice as well. So the only thing really that you can test is the timer. And the first thing you want to do before you start taking any panels off or taking the meter and testing anything is do what? Yeah, Mike? Put it into defrost mode. Advance that timer. Remember last week we had those timers on the table and we were turning them until they clicked? So the first thing you want to do is go into the refrigerator, turn that timer, hear it click, and see if it goes into defrost. Mm -hmm. So we're listening for what? What are we listening for? Cool. Yeah. All the the sizzling sound from when the ice melts. Turns yeah, water so you're listening it. to if you hear the heater behind that evaporator starting to melt that ice. It's going to take a about, few minutes. But again, you be patient and you wait. And if that heater comes on, it's almost like a stove boiling water. It's going to be splashing over. <coughs> so your heater is going to go tss, 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 And you're going to hear that sound if the heater's working. So let's let's go further with that. You go into defrost, you turn the timer, you hear it click, you wait five minutes, and you're listening to the freezer, and you're hearing tss, tss. What's that tell you? Your bimetal's good. My timer. Your bimetal's good because that heater wouldn't come on. What else? The heater's good. The heater's good. 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 So what do you do? Really bad. What? That one's not as good. The timer will be back because it's not as bad. Change the timer. Maybe the timer's not advancing. I mean, if you turn the timer and it clicks over here, and that heater, you hear it melting the ice, you know the heater's good, you know the bimetal's good, 
oh, I'll be right back. I'm going to go get a timer off my truck. I didn't even pull out a meter. I put in defrost. I know the heater's working. I know the bimetal's working. Most likely the only thing wrong is the timer's not advancing. There's only three parts that create defrost. And if the heater's coming on, the bimetal and the heater are good. So you change the timer. Remember, we got to do the right timer. We talked about timers last week and those loose wires and, and how the heater's connected. But what if we go into defrost and that heater don't come on? Fire thermostat. Bimetal heater, right? What about the timer switch? Did the switch may not be making contact here? Okay. Well, Whirlpool's got this test plug right here, a test terminal. It's got a brown and a pink wire on it. And when you open up that refrigerator control compartment and you drop down the thermostat and the timer right there next to each other, you're going to see a plug with these two color wires, brown and pink, and they're not connected to anything. So you look and you say, I got a plug here, where does it go? You know? Well, that plug is not to be plugged in, that plug is for you to do testing. Because if I take an ohm meter and I put it here and here to test for ohms, what am I testing? Bimetal. I'm testing the bimetal. I have to unplug the refrigerator and I'm testing the bimetal. What if it gives me zero ohms? Do I change it? No, it's good. It's good. Bimetal's good. No. What else can I do from that plug? What else can I test? You could test your defrost heater. I can test my defrost heater. How can I do that? I go back to from the cam to uh, well, the neutral is the power cord in the back of the refrigerator. What else? Find an easier way. You got the idea, just look for it. From the end to that point. Is that like a connector where it's after the defrost heater? Right here, it goes to a neutral, so all this is connected together. Yeah, so I put my lead there. And well, you can't get to this. No. 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 How about... We can disconnect the heater. No, I can't get to the heater. It's buried in ice. But if I put my own meter on brown, and what components are right next to where, I, where that plug is? I said, what am I going to see? What parts? The timer and the thermostat. The timer's there, right? Yeah. This side of the timer, isn't it neutral? Yeah. So if I put one meter lead on brown and one meter lead on white on the timer, can I home out the heater? Yeah, yeah. So right there from the control, I can test the bimetal. I can test the heater. Ah, right, right there. I don't even have to go in the freezer. Watch this. I go to customer's house. It's all frozen up. Okay. I want to see if the bimetal is good. I put my meter on this wire here and this wire here, and I'm going to check the bimetal. I have no reading. So bimetal's bad, right? Yeah. That thing's buried in ice. Well, you can sit there with a hair dryer, or if you get a little fancy heat gun, if you're not careful, it gets so hot, you can damage the liner of the fridge, melt wires, melt the fan blade because it's plastic. Hmm. What if? I say, hey, I got a bad bimetal, but I take a little piece of wire and jump this. I put it in defrost, and then the power goes through my little wire and energizes the heater. And while that's happening, I'll be right back. I'm going to go down to my truck and get a new bimetal, and I'm letting the heater melt the ice. So I bypass the bimetal. We cannot leave it like that. You do not leave it like that. You go to the customer's house, you say, oh, look, I'll just put this jumper in. I'll be back in a couple of days with a defrost bimetal. That thing goes in the defrost, and for 22 minutes, that heater's running. It's supposed to run for 22 minutes. And the customer's going to have cooked steak in the freezer. <laughs> okay? But, like I said, a defrost problem takes about five to seven working days to build up enough ice to affect the cooling for a customer. So if you bypass the bimetal, and you say, man, I don't have any more bimetals on my truck, or this is a special bimetal, i got to have this model and this part. <coughs> I order it, I'll bypass it, 
force it in the defrost with the heater inside the fridge. If the timer shuts off and it still hasn't melted the ice, go back in the defrost again. But sooner or later you're gonna, hey, how you doing? How are you doing? Sooner or later you're gonna melt enough ice where you can take it apart and get in there and check it out. Pause the video.